morning. Good morning. We welcome you again to the house of the Lord during these COVID conditions. Uh, as you see, we have uh, just every other pew being used, and you may have noticed that from last week to this week, the pews have been changed. The, the ropes were moved so that the pews that you sat in last week are not the same pews that you're sitting in this week. So, who are we? What are we about? We are St. John's, growing in Jesus and spreading his saving grace. And we have a Bible verse for this month. It is, let everyone be subject to the governing authority. Shall we try that one again? Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. We thank you for social distancing. We thank you for wearing your masks. We thank you for gathering and for chatting with family and friends outside. It's all a part of fighting the virus that we are in the midst of. And to update us a little bit more on that, Sylvia, we've asked our parish nurse to share again just a few words. Thank you. I told you last week you'd see me on natural, no makeup today. I'm not going to let it sweat off underneath my mask. Welcome. It's great to see um, everybody back and worshiping with us. A couple of reminders. Continue to wear your mask. Thank you very much for doing that. And remember that the correct way to wear your mask is up over your nose and underneath your chin. That helps prevent the spread of the, or the potential spread of the virus. I was watching, um, unfortunately, one of those um, political programs this morning and they were talking about the spread of COVID. And you may have heard on the news that last week or yeah, last week, um, Illinois saw another spike in the rise of COVID transmission or um, positive cases, a whole 3%, where before um, Illinois had been pretty much at zero increase. That means that the virus is still alive and well, and so we have to maintain what we're doing in order to take care of ourselves so we can take care of others. So please continue to wear your mask. Follow that social distancing. Um, for those of you that weren't here last week, we want you to stay six feet apart from your fa um, non-family members. And a good measure for that are the posts in the pews. That's about six feet of, um, apart from each vertical post. Pastor sent me a thing on Friday about it was, he sent it yesterday, but it was on Friday's Good Morning America about the spread of COVID has been linked to many church, well, not many, but several church services across the country where those church services were not conducted with wearing masks and with monitoring and maintaining that social distancing. And that um, has shown also a spike in the transmission of COVID. So, we thank you for wearing your masks. Um, to go along with the way mask wearing and the social distancing, number one, make sure that you're using hand sanitizer. There have been hand sanitizer stations set up at both entrances. Number two, there is no singing during the church service, and that's to help prevent the spread of the virus. If we have a virus in us and we sing, we have to use more force from our lungs to get our voices to sing. Hard to believe that God would have created us to have to use more force to make beautiful noise to his name. But that's how it is, so therefore we won't be doing any singing while we're following through on this. And finally, I would like to thank you for your patience so that hopefully you don't all become patients. Two different spellings of patience. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. One thing to note also is that in that story uh, from the New York churches where the virus had spread, um, the people were not, or they, they were not wearing masks and they were singing. And so I think we're doing the right thing by wearing the masks and by not singing. So we want to keep, try and keep everybody safe. Another part of the uh, COVID precautions is going to be the way that we do communion. It's going to be different than what we're used to. 
It's going to be a continuous communion. We're going to ask that families would come out to the, to the aisle, and then they would socially distance. Uh, each pew is three feet apart, so if, in the line, if you would uh, stay six feet apart from other, you know, the next family members or the next uh, family group, we'd come forward, receive the uh, host, come here and receive the wine, and then drop the cup into the receptacle. We go back and then back into your pew. Um, we're going to do that with first the south side. And then up, up, up in front here, we're going to shift over, and then we'll do commune the north side. Okay. We will not have ushers. Uh, I think that you'll be able to see, you know, when it is your turn to come forward, and we do ask you again to practice social distancing. Any questions on that? Yeah, I think it's fairly simple and straightforward, um, but I think it'll go by. my uh, I'm going to put it back on for the communion distribution, but um, for now, it just does make it a little easier to breathe with all the talking that we're doing. We would ask that uh, those that are able would stand and for the invocation. We are on page three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Truly, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I invite you to pray silently as we confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Truly the Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Truly the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And in place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, on and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant, and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. So in peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offered here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And also with you. We bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, who has given us this good earth in which to live, and who sends rain and sun to cause plants to produce fruit and grain for harvest, continue to send your life-giving word to us, so that we resist the cares of this world and return to you a harvest of new sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to the reading of God's Word. First lesson for today is from Isaiah chapter 55. God's Word accomplishes His plans, and surely as rain gives growth to plants. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to be empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth in the city, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for today is from Romans chapter 8. Because the Spirit leads us, we know we are children of God. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and as children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, so those that are able to rise as we prepare for the hearing of the Holy Gospel, and let us together speak the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And a great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, The sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. 
And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. For our message today, we return to the epistle or the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that for which I propose, and shall succeed in the, the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, truly, what a year it has been. Who would have thought that 2020 would turn out this way? COVID-19, excessive force use, protests, riots, tearing down statues, wanting to change history. And what's going to be next? That's anybody's guess. And what are we learning? I think we're learning that we don't need some of the people and things that we have idolized. We're learning that we can get along without sports and sports figures. We're learning that we can get along without actors and new movies coming out. And some, I think, are learning that we don't even need restaurants. But we are learning that we do need kitchens to prepare the food God grants each day. We are learning that we need doctors and nurses to support us, our bodies in the fight against this disease. We are learning that we need police forces as a means that God provides us with protection. We are learning that we need teachers to, as a means to educate our children. And most important of all, we're learning that we need the Word of God in our lives. It wasn't too long after the COVID-19 broke in the United States that I saw a meme, a little image, that showed the devil and Jesus in conversation over the world, over the globe. And the devil proudly says, I've shut down all the churches in the world. And Jesus replies, on the contrary, churches have opened up in every Christian home. You know, there's been a resurgence of the family altar where families and individuals gather in their own homes around the Word of God, gather for devotions, gather for prayer. And I hope that's happened in your house too. Because the Word of God is vital for the lives of God's people. And I also hope that as we return to worship as we are, that you will not neglect this family altar. For where the Word of God is neglected or ignored, faith can suffer and even die. But where the Word of God is openly read and spoken and believed, the Holy Spirit can do what He does best, and that is to bring us to Jesus, where our sins are forgiven and where our faith is strengthened. And how we need that gift of forgiveness. 
how we need to confess our sins both in public worship and in our daily life. We need to understand how we failed our faithful God and Savior. And we need to hear about God's love and forgiveness won for us on the cross of Jesus Christ through and through His glorious resurrection. His love, His forgiveness is ours. Not because we deserve it, but because He's faithful and His word endures forever. And we've also learned that it's even more important than we ever knew to assemble regularly for worship as we have today. Here is where God's Word is proclaimed. Here is where God meets with us face to face in His Word. Here is where God's gifts of baptism and the Lord's Supper are administered. And here we return today to those simple gifts of bread and wine which bear the very body and blood of Jesus our Savior. And whether we stand or kneel, whether we come up in tables or come up in a continuous distribution, God keeps His promise and delivers His precious gift of forgiveness, love, and life. It's been the Word of God that, like the rain and snow, has watered and refreshed our soul during the times that we could not meet. And now it is our precious joy to return to God's house with a renewed understanding of just how important it is to be here and just how important it is to receive God's good gifts. How we've hungered for this day as we once again receive the body and the blood of our Savior given and shed for you, all for the forgiveness of sins. Truly I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And with joy and thanksgiving, we come, we come. Amen. And may God's peace, which passes, is our human understanding in your hearts and minds in true faith. In Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We invite you to silently consider our common Christian faith as I speak the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is a normal spot when the offerings would be received. However, they are being received uh, through the receptacle in the Northex during this time of COVID-19. We bow our heads for the prayer of the church. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people and grant to us all things needful and beneficial and keep from us all things harmful. Holy Lord, mighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. 
Give to our hearts your perfect peace, that we may not be anxious or live in fear, but rest all our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for your word to be planted, that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works that you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you know how weak and frail we are. Give to those afflicted in mind, body, or soul the fullness of your healing grace, that according to your will they may be restored to health. Hear us for all those suffering or recovering from the pandemic's ravages, and for those who have requested our prayers, namely the family of Stephen Stahl, the cousin of June Keene, who died this week. Be with Eleanor Erickson, who faces a procedure this week. Be with Jim Anders, who continues to recover, and also Sylvia's uncle in Germany, who suffered a health issue. Be also, Lord, with those whose first names we mentioned before you. Lord, there are people we know among our family and friends who need to know you or know your love more clearly. Here are silent prayers for those whom we know among our family and friends whom we name before you in our hearts. Send the Holy Spirit to them to open their hearts to your loving grace and open our hearts and mouths to speak of our joy in trusting you as our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Matthew Binger and Carrie Falk and Emily Mullen, Chris Merdekis and Mike Cross and Colton Nelson and Lucas Nelson and Jordan Conrad. As we are your children, Lord, renew our faith in your forgiveness, your presence in our life, and our response of faithfully living as your child. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a holy God, mighty Lord, your word endures forever. Keep us from being tossed about by every wind of chance and change, and help us to endure upon the firm foundation of your word and sacraments. Prepare us so that we may worthily receive the Lord's body and blood by true faith, and be kept by this blessed communion toward the day when we shall be reunited with all who have gone before and dwell in your presence forever. For in Jesus and with Jesus, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose death destroyed death and whose glorious resurrection opened to us the way to your gracious presence, where we pray, Abba, Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have sent, who you have created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. So gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. And gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do, do this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. forward for the distribution if to receive the host if you would take your hands and cup them like this I will drop the wafer into your hand so that I'm not touching everybody's hands take a knee the body of our Lord broken on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of sin
to life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We take a moment for silent prayer as we extinguish the candles. Children, day by day. 